Hi, I'm Maria Nadestad, and welcome to the very first episode of the OMG Gnomics show. Our first question is one I've been asked multiple times at conferences. I want to learn bioinformatics, but which programming language should I learn first? When we talk about learning bioinformatics, it's useful to divide the students up into two groups, the ones who don't want to make their own software and the ones who do. Both of these groups will do data analysis, run statistical tests, make plots, and use bioinformatics software made by other scientists. But the second group will also make their own bioinformatics software for the community to use. If you need to make some specialized scripts for your own research, but you're not releasing anything for other researchers in your field to use, then you're in the first group. For the first group, you're likely to go in to get the most use out of R. Some people are a little stuck up about R, saying it's not a real programming language, but it definitely is, and it has a lot of cool things built into it that also make it ideal for bioinformatics. It has a built-in data type called a data frame that has the same column and row setup as an Excel spreadsheet, where your genes, cells, people, time points, etc. will be rows while your variables are columns. This makes a lot of sense as a way to think about most kinds of data. So the Python people have actually made a package called pandas to copy some of this functionality into Python, though it doesn't work as smoothly as the data frames do natively in R. The packages available for R to do bioinformatics are also great, ranging from RNA-seq analysis to making phylogenetic trees, and these are super easy to install from CRAN or from the Bioconductor. If you use the free RStudio software as your programming environment, then it's even easier to manage what you're doing, and I would highly recommend RStudio, especially for beginners when you're just starting out. Another major advantage of R is ggplot2, which is an awesome package for making plots that gives you results really quickly with even minimal coding skills. I made a video course about ggplot on my personal YouTube channel, Maria Natistad. Just search for plotting in R for biologists, and that course includes a good getting started guide for R in general, so you can figure out how to get your data in there and just to kind of set up your environment and everything like that so you can get started in R really quickly. Now, for bioinformaticians who make their own software, I would recommend that you start by learning either R or Python, but also Bash. R is great for all the reasons I just described, but if you like coding more than statistics, you may enjoy Python style a lot more. How could you possibly know you enjoy coding more than statistics when you're choosing your first programming language? But I would suggest trying them both and seeing what you like the best. I personally enjoy coding in Python more than in R because its rules make more sense to me and it feels more like a programming language, even though R technically also is one. In my experience, it's also much easier to make a command line tool in Python than in R, and Python also has some packages for bioinformatics that are quite useful, just like R does. So they'll have different packages and you can decide based on your application which one of these languages are actually going to be useful for you right now. As you can probably tell, I've used both R and Python a lot in my work, and I actually use R for plotting and statistics, while I use Python for basically everything else, ranging from merging variant call sets to providing backend algorithms for my web applications. So I mentioned that you should also learn Bash, so it's very important for bioinformaticians to learn Bash, which for all of our intents and purposes as bioinformaticians is interchangeable with shell, the command line, or the terminal. So Bash is the primary way to access your data on your institution's cluster and to run most genomics and bioinformatics software. It's also very powerful for manipulating your data, like sorting, filtering, and doing calculations between columns, like subtracting or adding columns together to get new numbers. And all these are available through various utilities in Bash. In my experience, and from everyone else I've talked to about it, Bash was confusing and scary at first, but when you get the hang of it, you start to feel this power surging through you, and you can do things in a second that would normally take you hours to do by hand. Even two years into it, I will still learn something new in Bash that will blow my mind, and I'll kick myself for wasting my time previously having programmed it from scratch in Python for like an hour. 
but Bash has all these built-in things that just make this really easy for you. And as I said, for many things that you're doing on your institution's cluster, you may need Bash in order to even access your files. So it can be very useful. Also for running things like SAM tools and aligners and variant callers, you're just gonna need Bash. So I highly recommend that you learn that as one of your first languages. In summary, for wet lab people who want to add bioinformatics to their toolbox, I would focus on learning R first and then applying it to your own work as much as possible. For people who want to focus on bioinformatics as their main focus of their career, and they want to make their own tools too for the rest of the community to use, I would actually recommend learning the trifecta of R, Python, and Bash. Though you could get away with choosing between R and Python as long as you still learn Bash in addition to one of them. I can go into more depth on any of these topics or give an introduction to any of these languages and how to get started with them if you let me know in the comments below. There are many other languages out there too, so before I end here I'm going to give a brief reason why each of these are not recommended for bioinformatics, for beginners, or for anyone at all in some cases. Uh, C and C++ are great for making super optimized command line tools like aligners and variant callers, but you'll have a much easier time learning Python as your first language and then going to these high performance languages for a particular problem in the future. Since they are a lot harder to learn, they're more finicky and they take a lot more code to do the same thing that you can normally do in Python with a few lines. Another one is Perl. Perl is still what a lot of people use, but it's fading out of use because Python can accomplish the same tasks and is easier to write code for, especially for beginners. Ruby is one of the hot languages right now for good reason, largely because of the power of Ruby on Rails for making database-driven web applications like blogs and Twitter. Ruby, however, is not great for bioinformatics because it lacks the community support in terms of the packages that R and Python have for bioinformatics, so you would be better off learning probably Python instead of Ruby. JavaScript and PHP are great languages for web applications, but a bioinformatics web application should never be your first project when you start learning bioinformatics and learning to code. You could make a computational method in Python or R and then later make it into a web application, but that's not a project for a beginner. Also, HTML and CSS, by the way, are not programming languages, if you were thinking about them, but they're actually markup and styling languages, respectively, that you will use along with JavaScript and PHP for that web application you might make someday. But in the meantime, don't worry about learning JavaScript, PHP, HTML, or CSS until you have some kind of computational method you, you may want to turn into a web application later. So this is not something for beginners, but I highly recommend it for people who already have some piles of scripts that they want to make more accessible to the community. And that's something that I can talk about in more detail later. Just let me know in the comments if that's something that you want to see more of. Java is a popular language that most people have heard of, and in bioinformatics, a notable example of using Java is the genome browser IGV. However, I wouldn't recommend Java for beginners because it has some issues including memory management that are not great for the data intensive area of bioinformatics. And also Python and R just have many more bioinformaticians who are using them. So they're building packages and they can answer your questions online. So there's a lot more help available there. I would only recommend learning MATLAB if you're a neuroscientist and your lab already has several scripts written in MATLAB for you to use. And so in the field of neuroscience, it can be really great, but because it is proprietary, so you have to pay money to use it. And because R and Python really can do many of the same things, I would only recommend MATLAB for neuroscientists who already have a wealth of scripts to use. All right, that's all I have to say about bioinformatics programming languages for now. If you want to see more videos like this about bioinformatics, then make sure to subscribe here on YouTube and sign up for updates at omgnomics.com slash subscribe to get new videos, guides, and scripts about bioinformatics delivered to your email inbox every week. And if you have a question you'd like me to answer on the show, you can send it to me by going over to omgenomics.com slash TV and typing in your question there. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time on the OMG Nomics Show. That's all I have to say about that.